Hey y'all, welcome to Black Mamas Do Science. This is a YouTube channel that I do with my son and every week we will be doing really cool science experiments that you can do at home. So this week we have a really fun weather experiment. We are going to be making a tornado in a jar and then we'll discuss all about how tornadoes form. So come on, let's go. All right, y'all, the materials you'll need for this experiment are super easy. Hopefully you have all of this stuff in your kitchen. So you will need a mason jar. I love a good mason jar. Then you will need water and you will need dish soap. So we had green dish soap, but you can use blue if you prefer. And you will need food coloring, whatever color you like. We use blue, but if you wanna use red, go for it. And then you will also need vinegar. So once you have all of your materials, we are going to sit down and do this experiment. All right, y'all, when you have all your materials ready, let's get to making our tornado in a jar. So the first thing that you will do is you will fill your mason jar up with water. Make sure that it's filled up about three fourths full. Once that is filled up, what you will do is add your food coloring. I wouldn't recommend that you make it a super, super dark color, but just maybe two drops of food coloring should be plenty in there. Once you have added that, go ahead and add one teaspoon of your dish soap. So once that's in there, you can kind of mix it up. And then after that, you will need to add one teaspoon of vinegar. And once that's in there, what you will do is you will close up your jar and you will shake it up, swirl it around. And what you'll notice is a funnel start to form in your jar. So if you don't see it right away, go ahead, keep swirling it, and you should see a funnel in your jar. If you notice that you swirled it a whole bunch of times, because Dax and I did this experiment a lot, you can go ahead and remove the bubbles off the top of your jar if you notice that it's not causing a funnel after a while. So you can keep reusing that same water vinegar and dish soap in the same jar. Just take the bubbles off the top and you should be good to go again. So now that we've done this, let's get to the science behind how a tornado is formed. Hey y'all, this is your first time with Black Mamas Do Science. Thank you so much for visiting our YouTube channel. We hope you are having fun making a tornado in a jar and we hope you will share this video with another mama. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. All right, y'all, now that we've made our tornado in a jar, I know your kids are gonna be asking you a ton of questions on how tornadoes form. Don't worry, I got you. Let's get to it. Now, tornadoes usually form in thunderstorms and when warm, moist air and dry, cold air meet, it creates a ton of instability in our atmosphere, which creates these really big, huge thunderstorm clouds. So if you've ever looked outside and you've seen a really tall thunderstorm cloud, that is usually because there is a lot of instability in the air. When there is a change in wind direction and an increase in wind speed as you go further and further up in the cloud, it creates an invisible horizontal spinning effect in our lower atmosphere. As the air continues to rise with this up, updraft, it ends up creating a tilt and it rotates the air from horizontal to vertical. Those strong and violent tornadoes usually occur within this area of strong rotation in the cloud. So here are a couple of fun tornado facts that you can share with your kids. So tornadoes look like traditionally a funnel shape or sometimes it can look like a slender rope-like tornado. If you've ever seen those on TV or maybe you've seen them in person, some can even have multiple vortices. So you may see two funnels come down from one cloud. Sometimes you will hear that there is hail that has happened if you've ever 
reported or heard of a report of a tornado and hail happens when water droplets are caught in the updraft that we talked about of a thunderstorm and these water droplets are lifted higher and higher and higher in the air because the higher you go in the atmosphere the colder it is so those water droplets started off as liquid and as the updraft keeps pushing those water droplets up they freeze and ends up making hail as it gets heavier and heavier it falls down to the ground and that's why you sometimes see these little pellets of ice around if a strong thunderstorm has happened. So, all of this tornado talk, there are a few things you can go over with your kids to help them feel a little bit more at ease in case a tornado warning ever happens to y'all. So before a tornado ever happens, make sure to have a tornado safety plan. You can decide where you're gonna go in your house in case you ever are issued a tornado warning. Make sure you have water, flashlights, and all of the contacts that you may need to have after a tornado has passed. You can do all of that right now today without ever having to deal with a tornado happening right at this second. But when a tornado happens, you're gonna follow your plan. So part of your plan could make sure if you have a basement, we don't have a basement here where we are, but you can go to an interior room with no windows, maybe it's a bathroom, get inside of the bathtub, cover yourself up with pillows, and make sure that your family is safe. You wanna stay away from outside walls and windows in case any debris happens to come through them. All right, y'all, well, we hope you had a lot of fun learning about tornadoes and making your own tornado in a jar. Dax loved this experiment because he could shake this jar up as much as he could, and we hope to see you next time. Bye, y'all. Do you see the tornado? Shake, 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 Your milky soul. Well, you did it. <laughs>